the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. <coughs> A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron and his sons, thus you shall bless the sons of Israel. You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you 
and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the sons of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. God, be gracious and bless us, and let your face shed its light upon us. So will your ways be known upon earth, and all nations learn your saving help. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. Let the nations be glad and exult, for you rule the world with justice. With fairness you rule the peoples, you guide the nations on earth. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us his blessing till the ends of the earth review him. O oh God, be gracious and bless us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, when the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So through God, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, the shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is, of course, the 1st of January. 2023. Yesterday was 2022. So we're at a turning point in time 
as January begins. And this is the day, the 1st of January, chosen by the Church to celebrate Mary as Mother of God. What might this link tell us? Well, why is January called January? Well, it's from a Roman god, Janus. That's where we get the word January. Now, Janus, a god in ancient Rome, had one head but two faces. One face looked in front of him, the other looked behind. First of January, two faces. We look forward, we wish each other a happy new year. We might even make resolutions about what to do in this coming year. And we look back, every newspaper, television and so on, will have programs on the year that's gone, what happened in the last year. We might reflect on our lives like that as well. What happened to us in the last year? What might we look forward to in the next? The 1st of January then is a crucial point in time, which means in how we make sense of our lives, looking forward, looking back. Janus, the God with two faces. Now, how might that help us celebrate Mary as mother of God? Well, we look back, she looked back, we look forward, just as this time of a year suggests. Now, the mother of God is an extraordinary statement. God doesn't have a mother. Mothers don't give birth to God. We're celebrating what might look like a contradiction, a paradox. One woman, mother of God, of a God that has no mother, of a mother who doesn't have divine children. So how can this be? Well, let's look back, let's look forward. How might God have prepared us, Mary, for Christmas, for the incarnation of God now in Jesus becoming a human being? Mother, God, look back on both. Mother takes us back to Eve, Adam and Eve. Eve, the mother of everyone, the mother of all. But Eve fell, she became sinful, and ever since the whole species, us, have original sin, sin at our origins, but not Mary. The medievals loved play on words, and of course we played on Latin words. Eve in Latin was Eva, E-V-A. And of course the angel Gabriel greeted Mary in Latin, as they read it, with Ave, which is Eva written backwards, A-V-E. So Mary reverses what went wrong with our mother, Eve, in reversing it in being made sinless. From when Mary was conceived, throughout her life she did not sin, unlike Eve. So, on the human side, Mary was a mother like no other. What on God's side? Well, the halfway point might be the ark. As those Jews moved through the desert towards the promised land, 
God was with them, present in a unique way among his unique people. And in the tent of meeting, where Moses used to meet God, then the ark, this kind of chest, carried in the desert and into the Holy Land and into the temple. God's presence was felt in a unique, special way. God was present in the ark, in the temple. Mary is now the ark of God. She carries the presence of God, not only a presence, but literally, physically, in Jesus Christ in her womb and giving birth. God's present among us, as he indicated in being present in the Ark of a Covenant. And just as King David danced in front of the Ark, so John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth leapt at the presence of Jesus in the womb of Mary. David dancing before the Ark, John the Baptist leaping before the human Ark, which is Mary, containing Jesus, true God, true man. So on both sides, what kind of mother was Mary? Eve reversed. How could God be present among his people in a human ark, in Mary? Looking back then, we can see the kinds of preparations for what we celebrate at Christmas, the incarnation. But Janus, this Roman god that gives us a month of January, looks forward as well as backwards. Well, how did Mary, the mother of God, look forward? From the start, the angel Gabriel told her she would conceive a son of a Most High, the Son of God. She wouldn't just give birth to a human baby, which she did, but simultaneously, that human baby would be the Son of God. Gabriel told her that from the beginning, from the Annunciation. And what happens not long after Jesus is born? They go to the temple, Simeon, the old prophet tells Mary, your son is destined for the fall and rise of many, and a sword will pierce your heart. So as she looked forward, this wasn't a child as had ever been known. This was, as well as a human child, the Son of God. So today's feast is extraordinary. What a way to start the year, to rejoice in what God can do and how Mary, full of grace, was and is the mother of God. Let us stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God.
So at this turning point of the year, this moment in our life when we look back and look forward, let us turn in prayer to the God of all time. For the church reflected in Mary, that we may faithfully bring forth Jesus Christ into our world. Lord, hear us. For all peoples under Mary's care, that in, coming, that in the coming year they may know peace and joy. Let us, Lord, hear us. <clears throat> For the sick, the poor, the persecuted and abandoned ones, that they may be consoled by our mother's powerful protection. Lord, hear us. For all families celebrating a new year, that they may share the happiness of the family of Nazareth. Lord, hear us. For Pope Benedict XVI, and for all the souls of the faithful departed, that God may grant them peace. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Let us now place all our prayers and petitions at the foot of our Blessed Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers, for we make them through your Son, Christ our Lord.
My brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, we one day will come to rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this feast of the motherhood of a blessed ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave a chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the immortal of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await for blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. <coughs> Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church. 
through Christ our Lord. Once again, wish you a very happy and blessed new year. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended.